Hello everyone and welcome to the latest tier list ranking video from your pals at UDS Gaming. My name is Tom, you may know me from all the reviews and other nonsense we do here. And uh, joining me today is my good pal, Confidant and all-round swell guy, Craig. How are you doing, Craig? I am doing okay. I've been told that this is actually called a ranking spankings and I will not hear otherwise. This is our series known as ranking spankings, which is just a silly name for tier list videos. Hey, and uh, silly. <laughs> it, it rhymes. That's something. That's something. Um, and today we're going to be looking at the video game controllers of probably the past 30, 40 years, sort of from the, the NES uh, onwards. I think is the, the, mm. the parameters we've made. I think um, from the list that we've got, I believe it is modern consoles from popular developers, publishers. Yeah. So basically what we're saying is that the 3DO can do one, uh, as can the Neo Geo. <laughs> we, uh, CDI, Turbo Graphics, Atari uh, Jaguar. Atari Jaguar actually is a notable omission from this. I okay. thought Atari might have made the list, but no, we're, we're looking at the uh, the video game controllers for consoles from uh, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, and Sega, I think is the, uh, the major, ones we're looking at. Major platforms. <laughs> How dare you insult the okay, so, uh, like that? Well, they did have over 5 million sales for Turbo Graphics, but the Genesis at the same time had free, uh, uh, 30 million. So, you know... Yeah, yeah. Turbo Graphics does what Nintendo don't, as the famous advert said. <laughs> so they are just the home consoles, is all we're doing, and um, so no no handhelds. And I think that's that's covered all of our bases, really, isn't it? Some say you can't release a video game uh, console without a controller. I think Tell that to the uh, to the uh, Microsoft Connect. That was released on the xbox one oh, 360 with a controller agree to disagree okay okay you, can, you could eventually buy the uh, xbox one without a connect after a lot of backlash that's so. when i got mine i was smart they ripped that out and they did a banging offer at the time so that's still my xbox today thank you microsoft I think I bought mine secondhand, so on the box it still had the Connect printed on the box, but thankfully it didn't come with it. And frankly, I feel like I would have paid more for them to just cut it away. But thankfully, we're not talking about the uh, the Connect today. We're talking about the controllers that you hold in your hands with your hands like this. Craig, you got a controller on. You do a demonstration of how one would hold a controller. Oh, well, that's a... I was going to say, oh, do you even know how? This is this is how I play anyway when I stream to show that I'm actually pressing the button. Oh, by input. okay. You look get a bit bad. like Limmy when you do that face. I get bad carpal tunnel. I, I wonder why. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to looking at some of the controllers. I think between the two of us, we have had at least some exposure to all of the uh, controllers on here. Craig is so excited that his camera's gone out of focus. And uh, I think the only other caveat that we will say is that neither of us work in the biz this is purely based on the layman's, uh, you know, opinion of how they feel to use, how you know our personal experiences of them are. So if you disagree, just remember it's just a bit of fun. It's just a what? bit of fun, you ever... the, mate. I am in here. This is the ultimate. This is this is what it is about. No other list matters after this, mate. Uh, this is the definitive if, ranking. If you disagree, you're wrong. Right. Right. All right. Okay. There you have it. You've, you've, you've heard it here first from him, not me. Comments, do what you will. But if you would like to see more tier list rankings, spankings videos like this, then just let us know if there's anything else you want us to rank from worst to best. Just, just sound off in the comments. I'd be delighted to do more because they're pretty easy to make. And, uh, you know, you think, hey, this will be a nice short thing to do. And then we're here three hours later. Yep. I'm looking forward to eating tomorrow now. Uh, but anyway, shall we get cracking on that note right now? Okay. So the first one I believe we have is the NES. Ah, the, the NES. Do you call it the NES or the NES? I see. 
it's kind of that scone and scone conundrum, but much like the scone and scone conundrum, I kind of fritter between the two for no rhyme or reason. Sometimes I say NES, sometimes I say NES, sometimes I'll t- say the Famicom just to sound uh, international. <laughs> but uh, this is obviously a very different controller configuration to the Famicom, I believe. Uh, so we're looking at the European and the American version of the NES controller. We got a D-pad, we've got a start yeah. and select, and we got an A and a B. I believe this was the first controller to have a D-pad, or at least the first home console controller. Obviously, it de- uh, debuted on the Game & Watch, uh, famously created by Gunpei Yokoi, uh, the grandfather of the Game Boy. Um, and uh, I think this is a controller which gets a lot right and has a lot of things going for it that would inspire and influence some major major controller design for the next sort of you know 30 40 years but it is really small and it's really uncomfortable to cut to hold uh i don't know about you what do you think about this controller i think this controller is a classic but nintendo have a love-hate uh relationship with uh, the ergonomics of people's hands. And <laughs> this is, it is a box. That is it, isn't it? Mm. It's not exactly the most comfortable to hold. It inspired a generation of people with carpal tunnel. Um, and since then, we have just just the next console was leaps and bounds, really, in, mm-hmm. in comfortability. So from a controller standpoint, it's it's not the best from a, from a nostalgia standpoint, it's up there. It is up yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, you can't dispute that the sort of yeah, the configuration of having a D pad and the two other face buttons is a formula that works for the games on there. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with the button format. It is just the actual sort of form factor of the controller itself that is that is the issue. Bear in mind that at the time, uh, the NES particularly was advertised as more of a toy as opposed to a video game console, purely because of the bad stigma left by the 83 um, crash, thanks to E.T. Thanks, E.T. Um, so oh. so you, can, you can imagine that it is more designed for a kid's hand, which makes... It looks like a baby's toy. <laughs> It it really is quite small for the grown up hands, and I don't have the biggest hands, but even my hands struggle to to uh, get used to it. Uh, but you can't, as you say, you can't dispute the the legacy that it's left, and so I feel like it needs to be notched up a few points just for that. So I would say, starting off with a nice even C tier okay. for this one, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I'm in agreement with that. Um, just just for. Tom, uh, I, I haven't told you, but I've rated them as a D pad disaster, C, B, A, and then Super. Just like the next console we'll be looking uh-huh. at, the Super NES. Yep. Uh, just before we get onto that, though, I, uh, as sort of, you know, quite a nice mid gap between the two, it's not featured on this list, but in, I believe, America and Japan, they had the top loader version of the, uh, the NES, which uh, had a, a newly designed. Um, controller which was more like a dog bone shaped which was much more improved uh you what I've got the this, heck? it's got this little boy here you do you remember him this wow is... i knew the nes was big but i didn't know you were that big <laughs> <laughs> craig is actually a 10 foot man what's next <laughs> Well, you buying a new NES Mini at this rate. <laughs> no, we're going to talk about the Super NES, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super Famicom. Not really. The Super Famicom was a different console. Uh, but yeah, this is, as you say, leaps and bounds ahead of the uh, the previous uh, controller. Mm. Uh, the, the curved form factor is in of itself just a game changer is so much more comfortable regardless of your uh, of, of the size of your hands uh, we have the two extra face buttons uh, we have is y and brain fart what is the other one is a b y x x that's it um so that in of itself um opens you up to way more um options uh, for gameplay and uh yeah this is this is a controller that Basically, the, the design of this controller lasted until 2013 in some shape or form. <laughs> and I... I They're still releasing them today, aren't they? 
Well, the point I'm making is that if you look at the face buttons of a uh, Super Nintendo controller, they are pretty much identical to the face button schemat- uh, layout of a PlayStation controller of a DualShock. Hmm. Oh, okay. And so, so in, in effect, up until the, the end of the PS3, this was the, the layout that we had. Um, so... So yeah, this is uh, this is quite uh, a you know quite an influential design that's lasted a long, 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 long time. This was the the first controller to have uh, the shoulders as well, wasn't it? It had LR yes. on the top. Yes, so absolutely. It's like they knew they needed to up the buttonage somehow, and mm-hmm. not only did they look at the front, but they also thought we could add some mobility on the top, which made them realise. We can't have it like a box anymore. We need to make mm. this a bit smoother, a bit easier to hold, you know. So that they looked at that and they, as you said, they, they made it better than the previous one. The only thing I will say is that I think they there lacks a little bit of personality with sort of, you know, the the black and grey design on the front of the of the NES. I think we lack that just a little bit on the uh, on the Super Nintendo. Um, which is purely an aesthetic personal choice as opposed to any functionality. But yeah, I think you just lose a little bit of the character. When you think of a controller, uh, like from that period, I think of the NES controller first and foremost. That is the quintessential uh, retro gaming controller. And I think that as much as this is an improvement in a practical sense, I think it just lacks a bit of character, but that's just maybe me. So the the design I'm looking at is uh, the purple uh, A and B was there was there a different color scheme at all? Uh, for the yeah, there was a for the European release. It was uh, slightly different. I will flash one up on screen now because it's not in this tier list. Because I I I didn't have a uh, SNES when I was a youngin. I I had the Sega Mega Drive was my first real console. So, yes. Yeah, so, you know. so for the uh, for the european release and i believe also the uh the famicom release it was uh blue for x green for yellow oh, yeah. uh, green for y sorry b for yellow yellow for b jesus i can't talk today and red for a and uh, so i think this if i remember correctly was whereas the nes wanted to be more like a toy and appeal to kids because the super nintendo was a reaction to the sort of the more edgier release of the genesis and mega drive uh they particularly in america where they were marketing it more heavily like that they wanted to see it seem more mature so they went for a more sort of neutral color palette whereas in europe and japan that wasn't so much of an issue so that's why they kept it colorful and light for kids and everything like that and that actually reflects in the uh the console design for the uh uh, American release as well, so I think I think, I think the colourful buttons look better. Yeah, really. I I agree. I agree. Um, obviously, in this tier list, we kind of going by what the uh, creator of the tier list has done, which is the American release. But I think, as you say, the the actual form factor is exactly the same. So it is just the colour scheme. I would easily put this in a high B, low A territory for me personally. I think. Function is is key for these sorts of things. You're not going to look at the controller for more than, than a minute before you start playing. So it needs to feel nice before anything else. And this just feels nicer. And you've got more buttons to do stuff. And it's just just the perfect sweet spot. In fact, yeah. I'm gonna I've talked myself into an A. I'd say this is an whoa, A. Whoa, whoa. I, I was thinking B. Um and it sounds like you've got a lot of rivalry with this. So I, I I'm I'm okay there with you, you know. If you think it's A, we'll go A. We can always move it down, but I think just for the fact of how long this design lasted and for for how influential it is, and these games still feel good today. Like I, I occasionally bust out. I've got a NES, a SNES now that I bought more recently, and they the games like games like the original Super Mario Kart feel best on that controller. If you try to emulate it with any other controller, they it just doesn't feel quite right, and. Uh, I think that speaks a lot for how well the games were designed for the controller and vice versa. Then the problem is you're trying to play SNES Mario Kart, which, you know... It, you know. You, a part of me was like, why would you play the old ones when you got the new ones? But then you play it with those old controllers and you just get it. It just has just that, get it. You just click. that nice... Yeah, it does. It just clicks. It just clicks. Um, so, Tom, I need to tell you something about this tier list. Go on. Have you heard of the Sega Master System? I have, unfortunately. It's, it's not in here. Wow. That's because yeah. it, 
I, I have a feeling, a very strong feeling, that this list was definitely made by an American because the master system flunked in America. Uh, it did all right in over here in the UK and Europe, and particularly in Brazil, where I know it, it lasted up until pretty recently. I think it may even still be in production by third parties. Um, but the, the master system controller is just a discount NES controller. <laughs> I don't like the master system controller. I am quite fortunate. I've got you, you know, you can get the um the add-ons that you clip onto a mega drive that allows you to convert um master system or play master system games on a uh, on a mega drive. I have one of them. So luckily I can play them on a Mega Drive controller because I wouldn't enjoy those games on mm. a Master System controller. They're pretty jank. So and the less we say about the Sega S uh, SG, whatever it was that predated that, the better as well. So for all of you commenters saying they don't even have it, we're saying it's so bad we would put it in D if not lower. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Okay. And we've included the Nintendo Wii U on this, so you know. Hey, how's... hey, I've got some thoughts and feelings on that, which you might not agree with. Okay. All right. But All right. We'll, we'll wait All right. for that. So then, if I if I'm correct, it would be the Sega Genesis, which was technically released before the SNES. Certainly was. Certainly was. Uh, I believe eighty nine. Uh, yeah. If I've got my dates correct, I am literally doing that off the top of my head, so that could be entirely wrong. I believe you're uh, correct. Excellent. We'll get it right from here, dear viewer. Don't worry. Yeah, we 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 know our we know our shiz. Um, so the Genesis slash Mega Drive controller had two uh, two iterations, as far as I'm aware. There was the original three buttons. Uh, so you had the, the D-pad on the left, as you have one before. Slightly different format in that it was it was more of sort of like a, a circular D-pad. But then on the uh, on the right-hand side, you had three buttons in a line. And then it was a little bit later on, I believe those three buttons became six buttons. Um, I So I think it's different regions, I believe. Um, I think six buttons might have been Japan and maybe Europe. Uh, maybe the free buttons was just America and Europe. I can't. I don't really remember, unfortunately. I'm going to look it up now because I have a feeling that it was a later, like universal um, upgrade. I don't want to shop for them. Come on. Really? Why not? Get yourself a. You could. Um, so you can buy it for the Switch now, can't you? Because they've yes. got that. Um, they've got that weird new Switch Online system. Um, Maybe you are correct. I don't. Here we go. Live fact checking everybody. You love to see it, didn't you? You love to see it. <sighs> but I, Sega Mega Drive was my first controller when I was a child. So uh, for me, it's it's very pivotal for myself and me of playing games and stuff like that. So when it comes to this, I just remember my little baby hands over it um so th this rates highly for me even though i know now the d-pad is not very good and it's quite mushy so um yeah so i it was actually a universal upgrade so the the genesis released in 1989 the six button um version came out in 93 I believe this was a, a reaction to uh, a lot of more fighting games coming on the uh, on the system. So games like Mortal Kombat and the, and the like uh, benefited from having a greater button um, variation. So uh, so that's why the, the we get the six button and the three buttons. Uh, my experience, because I was never a Mega Drive kid. Um, one because I'm a little bit younger than you, but also because my dad was a uh, was a Nintendo fan. Um, so we had um, the uh, Mario and Zelda. Exactly, we were we we had the SNES growing up, and so um, I only put, got to re really have a proper proper go at a Mega Drive in the past few years. And so I've been playing on a three uh, button thing, and it's fine. It's fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I wouldn't say I prefer it to the uh, to the SNES controller. The only thing that it has got going for it, which I do enjoy, is that the sort of the more banana boomerang shape of the uh, controller 
is a little bit more comfortable. We're sort of almost getting to sort of the the you know the 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 palm grip of that we would see sort of standardized across all consoles from here on in. Um, so from sort of a comfortability factor, I think it is it is better. I just think that moving your right thumb over three buttons doesn't feel as nice as having it sort of up, down, left, right on the uh, uh, on the SNES. So again, that could just be me and just sort of what I was grew up on and sort of, you know, it's like sort of reading in a different language, I guess, but um, I just prefer the SNES personally. So I think this controller was made with obviously the uh, NES was out by that point and then they were like well we'll give it one more button because that's one more than the NES and then the SNES came out and they're like oh what do we do we can't do shoulders because that won't work so I believe there's a mode button on the six button variation to just turn it on and off right so I believe that is the case so technically the same amount of buttons as the SNES but they're just all on the front uh, how do we feel about the design? Because in our tier list, we've got the free button, which looks a bit, mm-hmm. you know, you, you say bananary, that's true. But the six version has got some style going on there. It's very 80s futuristic. They've got like some galaxies going around the buttons as well, which is quite nice. I think from a style perspective, Sega always tried to be a bit edgy in that case, didn't they? Yeah. So in this list, we've only got the three button. Um, so it. It's it's hard to judge the the six button versus the the three button for me personally, just because I've not not really used much of the the six button. I would say the six button looks more futuristic, as you say, and it looks more impressive. Um, but overall, I do like the design of the uh, of of the Sega console controllers. I think, uh, as you say, they they have that sort of chic more mature feel to them i can see myself ripping off heads with the genesis controller i can't see it so much with a uh, snas controller or god forbid a nes controller uh, but it's because it's because sega do what nintendo don't genesis genesis B? yeah i would say yeah. i would put i would put it above the nes but barely barely Barely. Yeah, like this. I don't see that we, we, as we tier them, you know, I don't see this being high B. Let's say that. Yeah, I feel like there's going to be a lot that overtakes this, but we're still in those early years. We're still in the um, mid 90s. I'm drinking a Four Loco and uh, listening to some Smash Mouth. There you go. Sega CD is not on this list. Thank God. <laughs> so then it would go to PlayStation. PlayStation, uh, yes. So, so this, this is what I'm saying in terms of the uh, the SNES format going into the uh, the next the next generation. A lot of that's probably down to the fact that PlayStation and Nintendo had quite a, or Sony and Nintendo, should I say, had quite a close working relationship for a hot minute. And I wouldn't be surprised if Sony were directly inspired by the designs in uh, Nintendo. But yeah, it's. Uh, well, as well, um, it was original. The PlayStation was the Nintendo PlayStation, wasn't it? It was going to be a disc yep. add-on. So we here we have Sony and Nintendo working together. So what's Sony going to do? They're probably going to look at what their competitors have and try to make it the best they can. So like that at the time, it was mental that Sony was even entering the space. Mm-hmm. And to- Sony want to be known as that high quality experience. So you've got Nintendo, which is still in that sort of family friendly. You've got Sega, which is like, we're edgy, dude. And now you've got Sony being like, we're here for the high quality goods. Uh, you know, even the their playback for CDs on the PlayStation when it was first released mm-hmm. was highly regarded. So they, oh, they, yeah. they've come out and be like, we know you like video games. Just trust us. The controller looks weird. But it's gonna work, and it's got it's it got did. thighs. It's got. Don't compromise. Had the thighs. That's what they said. Ken Kutaragi said that. Yeah. PS thighs <laughs> nice, save lives. Um, yeah, I I think particularly the first uh, iteration. So we're talking about the uh, the one that predates the Dual Shock first. So we haven't hey, got analog. There's a good article on UpsideDownShock.com about <laughs> the history of PlayStation controllers. If you Probably want to know the by some loser. yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we haven't got Rumble. We haven't got uh, George. Uh, we haven't got analog uh, sticks. We've we've literally got the same face buttons of as the SNES, just with a couple of extra buttons on the top. Um, we're still still 
You very much. Gonna glaze over the L one R L two R one R two. That was that was revolutionary. Everyone's well, doing it now. Yeah, that's true. That is yeah. true. It did it did set a uh, a precedent. Um, I wasn't a fan of the grey, and to this day, I'm not a fan of the grey. I think it looks very very functional. It doesn't have a lot of personality. You reckon it's just industrial design? Yeah, and it's not even nice industrial design because because with the Sega and and PlayStation. Um, Models after the PS One, we we go for the nice chic black design. But what about uh, this interim one? You know, the PS lowercase one does color like a, an oh, off white. Not a fan of that. No, 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 no. no you no, just no. want you black, so it all looks nice. It just looks it looks chicer. The only thing I will say is that on these lighter designs, the dust doesn't show so much when they're on your shelf for twenty five years after you last yes. plugged them in. Um, but. There's a lot going for it. There's a lot of promise, but it's a little bit undercooked at the moment. I think there's a lot, lot of room for improvement, but I still think it deserves a B for the reasons you've listed. It's, it's obviously introduced L1, R2, L2, R1. I don't know why I did it that way around. Because you're a one. Star Wars guy. You're trying to make him sound like a robot. That's. <laughs> I thought you meant because, this. because like Star Wars films, I do them out of order. Um, Best way to watch. And. The uh, the the triangle square X circle. Configuration oh yeah, they they really nailed that. Like from a branding perspective, now they like you know, don't you? They they play it up so much, especially with the PS Five. Like they're the, the they call them the sacred symbols. So ah, very yeah, nice. there you go. I know, I know there was some some reasoning behind them when they first designed them that it was kind of lost on the Western releases because I know that in Japan. Um, the 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 standardized use of the buttons is a bit different. I know that circle was select, I think, on and instead of back. For yes, a lot of I stuff. think that's right. Yeah. Um was it so I know that the triangle and the circle was the other way around. Right. Like we got triangle as a go back. But yeah. in Japan circle was like it was a red circle which meant like leave. Oh okay. Uh, so, yeah, no, yeah, so no, now right. now in current times that's the same here as well. So mm. when was the last time you pressed triangle to exit something? Oh, I know. Exactly. I know. I still, as the muscle memory still there a bit where I think, oh, it's triangle to press to go back and everything like that. But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's. Are we going for a B higher than the Genesis slash mega drive? Yeah, I would say, I was okay. going to say it's easily top of B so far. Um, so but, uh, admin note for us two, they have the PS1 analog controller, but I don't yes. think we should get into that granularity. How about you? Oh, I was about to. <laughs> okay, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, and then just a quick aside, because on this list, we also do have the DualShock, the very first DualShock, which is effectively the uh, the first PlayStation controller, but with bosoms. Um, so uh, this this is a massive step up, purely because it has rumble. Analog sticks just offer so much more control, because rather than it just sort of being... Uh, you know, a press or not a press, you now have that level of control if you want to sort of sneak slowly or go full pell or turn slow or turn fast full in whatever pell. you're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, you know what was what it? I mean. a, digi- a digital feeling. No, no, it is an analog, sorry. Yeah, it's literally in the name. <laughs> yeah, it's literally in um, the name, you dingus. But the, uh, the thing against it, though, is that this wasn't released with a proper con- console. So mm-hmm. there are some games that benefit from it um things like 3d platformers crash bandicoot there are some games that don't function like at all like ape escape you need the analog sticks for that so i think that that may work against it they didn't really finalize it they were like hey we got this we got this cool new idea that all the kids are gonna love um maybe it was just released a bit too late you know but are we are we judging the controller in isolation or its implementation in sort of the wider console mm. lifespan. I feel like that is a, that's a difficult nuance because, because when you think of the actual design of the controller itself, this is a design that lasted for another two console generations. So if it wasn't pretty much bang on perfect, then, uh, then they would have iterated in some shape or form. Um, but but I do, I do see what you mean that it probably didn't get the rollout that it deserved, but I would easily put this, I don't know a tier for sure really yeah i would put i would put it above the uh, snes personally so you you said with the ps1 uh you know blanket controller that uh it inspired something for the future generations is this not the same with this dualshock one 
how how different is the DualShock One to the DualShock Two? Would you would you would you argue that much really? You know, and for another thing, it's got your your black that you like instead of this fog hat grey. Well, we will get to it, but I'm going to rate the DualShock Two even higher. Um, okay, okay. So, but uh, I would say so for set, not just setting the template, but bringing it on to um, you know, not quite perfect, but near perfect. The DualShock One easily gets an A tier. Okay, okay. Are we, is it above or below? Snez above. I would say above. He's he's got strong opinions. This boy. I do. That's I why do he indeed. wanted to talk about it. <laughs> um. So then, after the PS One, I look down my list. We've got the Sega Saturn. Oh dear. The con- the the console that was doomed before it started launched a thousand ships the wrong way. <laughs> it did. Killed by one press conference where Sony said the PlayStation was going to be a hundred dollars cheaper. Um, Wait, was that the one where they just went on stage, said ninety nine dollars, and then just two, walked off? Two ninety nine. <laughs> they just oh, walked two, off. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, because the the Sega Saturn had said it was going to be three ninety nine earlier that day. Um, not only that, but then they said, uh, yeah, they're going to be in shops today or tomorrow or whatever. Oh, like yeah, retailers were like, we are not ready for this. And so, uh, yeah, they, they kind of bit off to more uh, of their own hype. In my, in my, in my mind, it's just, um, Homer Simpson, the head of Sega Saturn saying like, it's the, the, the home console of tomorrow. Today, today. <laughs> released tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they did Homer Simpson's this pretty pretty badly, but the controller is not the worst. It's not the it's it's kind of just a souped up Genesis controller, six button style. Honest. Yeah, yeah, the six button. Uh, it's got the, pretty much the exact uh, same sort of uh, you know form factor. Um, this one had shoulder buttons on it as well, didn't it? I believe so. So this is my I've problem. Not play, I've not played a lot of Sega Saturn, but then again, you could say that for pretty much everyone on the face of the planet. Yes, yes. Um, and then, like, this was such a, a flop and there was an industry slowdown. It seemed like this was not the time for Sega. Um, but then really, when really was the time for Sega? <laughs> yeah, it's... I don't think it's the controller's fault that the console flopped, but... It so didn't help. There was there was two different variations, one in America and one in um you know the Europe. Uh the so it's got X, B, C, X, Y, Z, and then the shoulder buttons in this image have a on the front at least it's got the the skip forward and skip back like music. So, you know, it's it's okay. It's a C, at least. It's a low C. It's a low C. Okay. It's not a disaster, but... The Sega Saturn was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. Uh, low C, there we go. Yeah, not a lot to say about it, no. uh, which is prob- probably worse than being bad. Yeah, I, I once just... Uh, I saw a Sega Saturn in the street once in the rubbish, and I just got sad because I thought it was a bad VCR player. And as oh, I got closer, no. it was just been out there for days, just like rain oh. damaged and bad. Yeah, I could I could have had that. <laughs> I could have had that. Um, yeah. A year le- later, though, uh, there was a popular, a popular console called the Nintendo sixty four. Wow, what uh, a controller! <laughs> for better and for worse, the only controller that you need three arms for. <laughs> how it's you, weird, isn't it? I'm, I'm just... still still wondering to this day how how does one hold on to it? Well, I think isn't it the you're meant to hold the middle and the right one for. Uh, 3D games. This is sort of, you know, by, you know, rough estimate. And for 2D games, you're meant to hold the two wide boys. Um, I think that's kind of how they they wanted it implemented. It wasn't it wasn't always that, uh, you know, accurate. But I tell you what, I quite like it. I quite like this controller. It's got a lot of stuff wrong with it, but it does try a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I like that this is the first console that um, came with a analog stick, sort of, you know, as standard. Uh, as we said, the PlayStation sure is. Is it a stick? It. Is it a stick? Yeah, it's a joystick, basically. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and you've got that that nice meaty trigger on the back for it as well, which it feels like you're, you know, in a Starfighter or something like that. That feels good. Um, 
I I like the front button configuration. I think the the it, for the particularly the games that Nintendo developed. I'm talking, you know, uh, Super Smash, Mario 64. Uh, Mario Kart 64, they they all work really really well with it, and also you got the expansion pack on the back, which does a lot of cool stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that's. So you look at the the SNES controller, and then I don't think anyone really saw the N64 controller coming after that. No, but like they they've worked on their ergonomics, and they they realised that somehow through a cocaine fuel night they were like this is the best one and that's what they went with the the expansion pack the accessories you could get for it were really really good like there was the the, the things that step out in my mind at least is the rumble pack that you could mm-hmm. have and i think there was a a game boy cartridge as well that you could plug in there is that right i think i'm i remember playing Game Boy games on my N64 through some sort of contraption. So, I feel like that that does ring a bell. Yeah. Um, oh, it was the transfer pack. There you go. That That's what was, that was it. Called. Included with Pokemon Stadium. I so, knew it was a Pokemon thing that you could transfer your Pokemon from the the, the Game Boy games to Stadium and vice versa or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not only did they make a good controller, they realised we can put something on the back of it and it still won't be that bad for Mm. the ergonomics of someone holding it. And that's, that's pretty powerful stuff. No, please go. Sorry. Well, all I was going to say is, is that I feel like this is the first uh, console controller that really embraced um, limited editions and color variations (laughs) as well. Um, There was, there was all sorts. You had like, you know, translucent ones in sort of, you know, you can see all the, the nice innards in the inside. You have them to reflect the different console colors as well. And there's lots of cool uh, limited edition ones, which are super rare now. I think my favorite one is that there's one for uh, Donkey Kong that has banana tips on the ends of the prongs. Which which is <laughs> Shut up, banana tips. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just like it, it allowed Nintendo. Nintendo, when they're at their creative best, they are just so chaotic. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And I think the N64 controller gets more right than it gets wrong. It is weird and it takes some getting used to if you've come from a lot, most other cons- controllers. But for what it sets out to do, I think it's, I think it's an underrated gem. I think... Nintendo 64 was so popular, that's what made Nintendo start doing these special edition consoles and controllers and stuff like Mm. that. Um, So my argument was going to be, you know, that grey that you didn't really like from the PlayStation is still present here. But you're saying that we had enough variety that that's not really a problem? Yeah, I think because of the different variations that you got with this, I know there were a, a few, like a very limited few PlayStation variations. I think most of them were third party, but in terms of official, Nintendo really pushed the boat out. And I think because of that, it's easier to grade it based purely on its sort of, does you know, it, its layout as opposed to its color palette. Uh, naturally, the gray is is pretty dull, and it also does irk me a little bit that the controller and console are a different shade of gray. What's up with that? That's weird. Yeah, that What's doesn't that? What, that doesn't seem seem quite right. Can I uh, can I also as we we're, we're in the negative flow of things, the stick, they had to supply a glove because of Mario Party because if you were doing you know the mini game where you're doing that, you're you it literally tore the skin off thousands of kids' hands. Yeah, that's but I feel good. like that's a rite of passage. I I had <laughs> the. The worst blisters on both of my thumbs from just doing a constant manuals on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater on the PlayStation that um, I've just got like really thick calluses now. And I think that's the same with the the N64. You should just take your medicine, grow up and just take it. I thought you were going to say with with the joystick that uh, they never sat center after a few uses and they're always a little bit wobbly after that. Um, they're not the most uh, durable uh, sticks out there, but can can I talk about legacy? Um, even sure. if I was going to emulate an N64 game, I would not use a USB N64 controller. I just think, from a legacy standpoint, after that, Nintendo controllers became better. 
Hmm. Hmm. The problem is, is that I it's hard to 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 go in that line of thought because N sixty four emulation is historically awful. <laughs> it's just really bad. Just just like most of the games on the Nintendo sixty four as well. Oh, now that is a a lot of people look through the Nintendo sixty four with nostalgic eyes, and I'm here to tell you. A lot of third party games weren't that great on there. And yeah, third party maybe, but first party it was almost almost flawless. Al- almost flawless, apart from the controller, which didn't help it. But <laughs> ma- this is a conversation for another day. But Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time, Mario sixty four, like literal generational divining co- uh, games. Um, and the other thing is, is that I would say, and this is literally just me defending the N sixty four at this point, is that if you ask. If you had a sample uh, of like 100 people and you ask them what their favorite N64 game is, chances are they're going to say sort of the same sort of two or three. Whereas PlayStation, I would wager that most people have their own individual favorite because the PlayStation didn't have as many iconic games as the N64. So it may have been a smaller library, but the N64... So wait, your argument is everyone played the same game whilst PlayStation had a variety and better choice. Better choice is it had more choice. I wouldn't say as it's had I would, better choice. I would always say if I could have sixty pounds and buy a multiple of things rather than sixty pound to buy the one thing, surely that's better for choice and variety, isn't it? I would rather have one exquisite sixty pound suit <laughs> than ten Primark t-shirts. Where uh, where are you thinking about this N sixty four? And then let's take it down one level. So there well, in that case, I give it a. Put it down to B. Something tells me that you weren't really thinking. <laughs> Are you thinking high B? Is this better than a PlayStation 1 controller? Be- better than a, G- a Gen 1 PlayStation controller. Yes. Yeah, sorry, yes. A PlayStation controller from the first generation. Yeah, yeah. I'm willing to die on this. I'm willing to die on this hill. Okay, okay. Do you want to do the next one? Is it Dreamcast? It's Dreamcast, baby. Oh, oh Dreamcast. my God. Right, so... S tier, S tier, S tier, S tier. Right. I'm not going to say, right, it was forward thinking, but it was, it was. forward thinking. It was forward thinking. You could have your ammo count on the little VMU cartridge that slotted right into the into the thing. You saved your games in the controller. It's- I know. You could take out your games and carry them around. And play some games on your yeah, controller little, little doodad you could play i think you, there was even like a tamagotchi on there and things like that it was amazing this controller should have <laughs> brought sega well as well as the dreamcast in general should have brought sega into you know console domination for all time because i love the dreamcast uh it tried too much too soon and probably was you know uh, ahead of its time in too many ways but the controller is great i love that it's nice and fat and it's got you know a nice heft to it to you know uh sit comfortably in your hand it's got a great uh analog stick the d-pad feels good the buttons feel good and that's just the, you know the vmu as well the only thing which i don't think i like so much is that the wire came through the bottom as opposed to the top which felt a little weird but aside from that i love this controller a whole bunch i think the the wire coming from the bottom was only because the, the the memory card thing had to go through the top and that was the yeah. only way they could do it. But it's very... So they had this thing, I believe, for the previous console called like a 3D controller. So it was quite circular. So I think they took mm. inspiration from that and was like, we can actually make this into quite a quite a interesting concept. And I think, as you said, this was the first controller that did have quite a bit of heft to it. And it it was the first controller to have um, an analog stick above the the D pad, at least from mm. a, a big a big console standpoint. And so that inspired the Xbox controllers of today as well. So it, it's interesting to see that this controller was just so different from everything else at the time, you know. And yep. I think with the games that was released. From this on the Sega Dreamcast is a very, a very unique taste of that era. Things like uh, Nights into Dreams and um, Jet Set Radio, they they all yep. added to the mystique of this is if 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 Sony are doing the professionals console, uh, Dreamcast is like your art house project, and you can tell that just from their logo as well. And yep. it, it's it's more memorable. 
But does it hold up? Is what I'm thinking. I think so. I think yeah. uh, the the game, as it, as I said, the games that um, it was designed for work really, really well. It was only the other day I was uh, having a go at Soul Calibur on uh, my Dreamcast, and it just still feels so good. And then you got Crazy Taxi, you've got Sonic Adventures yeah, yeah, Two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was Sonic Adventures Two on here? Oh wow! On the Dreamcast, yeah, no, yeah. And then it was GameCube afterwards, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, because they went. There you bust. go. Look at look at that blurred out copy of Sonic Adventure Two. Oh, where's my camera? There, there my we camera? go. There we go. Ooh. There we go. Ooh. Rolling there around go. at the speed of sound. I paid twenty eight pounds for this. That was probably more than what they were selling it when it first released. Yeah, probably. Uh, I I think I may have been exaggerating when I said S tier, but I would say definitely A tier. I would say this probably isn't better than the Dual Shock One controller though. Yes, I would agree. Yeah. I think if, if it was this list was based purely on ambition, then it would easily be the best best controller. But yeah, I, I think there, there there is a reason that every controller doesn't have a VMU nowadays. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because you saw the 64, they had the expansion pack slot. Then Sega one-upped them and were like, we got two screens for you to look at now. And everyone was like, nah, let's not do that. There's an alternate history somewhere where that just kept going because now we look at two screens all the time, don't we? Yeah, I think I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that the PlayStation just like annihilated everyone. And so everyone was like, oh, okay, we just need to do what they're doing now. Um, had that not happened, then yeah, the, the, you, we could be living in a world where gimmick controllers are just, just the norm. But... Gimmick controllers? Instead, we got Joy-Cons, which are the most professional of controllers. Oh, we will be getting to them. We will be getting to them for sure. But uh, first, we'll do the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2? The DualShock 2. S tier, S tier, like every that. day of the week. Well, there's not really too much to say beyond um, what the uh, we said for the DualShock One because it's effectively the same controller. I think it it does weigh a little bit more. It does feel a, like a, a a bit of a, a sturdier build to it, but that black is just so gorgeous. That controller, man, is just the bee's knees. So I think I think they probably updated the the vibration in it as well. So, mm. you know, it, it felt a bit more a bit more with it. Um I can't remember. This does the Jewel Shock one have the the weird bigger uh L2R2 as well? I believe so, but I'm not oh, entirely yeah, sure. No, 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 yeah, don't listen to me. Yeah, at least that one does. So yeah. The PlayStation 2. What a console. There's a reason it sold 150 million units. It is still um, outsold the Nintendo Switch, which you think about the amount of people that play games now, the amount of population in the world, and the PlayStation 2 is still outsold. Yeah. I, I think it, it's even outsold all the, the handhelds, and most households had multiple handhelds. Whereas, you know, if you were a kid in the early 2000s and you had siblings, you only needed the one PlayStation, but everyone needed their own Game Boy or DS or whatever like that. And yet the PlayStation still has outsold almost all of them. I, and I think, it, I think it may, no, I think it may be the most, the highest selling, or maybe it is the Game Boy or the DS, but either way, it's right up there. It's right up there. People, people would argue that, you know, most people bought it for a DVD player, but people weren't buying that PlayStation 3 for a Blu-ray player, weren't they? So, you know... Oh, I, like, I bought my 360 for my HD DVD player. How's that working out for you now, mate? I, if I want to watch I Am Legend in high definition, I can watch it whenever I want. As long as there's a HD DVD... HD DVD, just saying it like there, HD DVD. Someone should have known. Someone All should have known. All the best uh, box office classics from the years circa 2005 to 2007 are, are I've got them on, on tap. Talking of uh, classics, do we want to talk about GameCube? Oh God, yes. This this might be my favorite controller design ever. Do you know I like Nintendo? <laughs> Purple, not a fan. I love it. The the analog stick, the analog stick's fine. The D pad is fine. You know, Nintendo know how to make good D pads, so hopefully that was fine. The C stick, what's that about? Why is it clunky? Like, why is it not smooth around the edges? The triggers on the top, 
what's that about? It feels like I you're pushing them. into a bucket rather than pushing a button. It, uh, like, I just don't understand what I love that. I love that. that that you get with it. Oh, it feels good, man. It feels did, good press did, those buttons. Did they design the, the front face buttons as well to be different sized? Like you got the two beans and then the two different size circles so that you don't need to remember because, mate, that's dumb. I believe the, uh, the, the if I remember correctly, the reason why the, they're different sizes and different shapes, it was to indicate sort of the hierarchy of the buttons of how often you would press them. Um, so the ones that you would press more, like the big uh, the big green button, they they have the, the the more real estate on the front, and then you have the secondary and the tertiary buttons, which don't take up as much space. Which again, it works for me. If I if I'm going to play a game from this era, if I can get hold of it on GameCube, I'll play it on GameCube because I feel the controller just works better for most games. It just and I didn't even grow up with a GameCube. I bought a GameCube well after the you know the initial um, period of its of its popularity, and I still go back to it. It's just great. It's just great. So I should probably caveat: I've never owned a GameCube, so you're this, missing this, that good handle fun. This, the, yes, the the exclusive Capcom Four that will never be released anywhere else on any other console ever. You, they're, they're good quality GameCube titles. It just, from if you look at that, mate, do you think that looks nice? For me, yes, okay, it does. So, okay, I, right. I, this is this is a lot of head over heart, uh, heart over heads, should I say? Can you agree with me? It's the most Fisher Price looking thing out of this whole controller tier list. Well, yeah, just by the fact that it's a different color than gray or black <laughs> or white, mate. And what? So let, let's make it an awful purple. Let's give it a big bright yellow button. Uh, then let's make the the back button bright red as well. What's that green? Yeah, just throw that green in there. That means yes. Let's do it. Where would you put it? In my personal ranking, this would go S tier and remain at the top. At the top uh, ever of everything. May there might be one c- controller later on that that okay. would have topped it, um, but. At least give me A, man. You got to give me A. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, ter- I'm not tyrannical, really. Tyrannically, <laughs> I'm not terrible. I'm not terrible. You know, this is a consensus. If you want to go S, we could put it at the bottom of S. I don't mind. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, do it. okay. Thank you. That's the Neil Upton portion of the show taken care of. He's happy. Um, released the same year as the GameCube which is surprising to me, looking back, was the original Xbox. Also known as the Duke controller. Ah, uh, the Duke. I like the Duke controller. Um, we, we talked about the Dreamcast being a big, hefty boy, and I felt like Xbox at that time, they were trying to be edgy, weren't they? Like, this isn't your kid toy. And like, yeah, big X console, just slap it down on the desk, you know, don't drop it on someone's head, they'll have a concussion, uh, get out the controller, and it was so different, really. No no shoulders, they got the black and white on the front. They basically were took, took what Dreamcast's design was and tried to make it a bit more manageable. And I believe more they were... Manageable. More manageable. More, well... Manageable at the very least. They tried. They tried. I believe they were working with Sega and it, they were going to have Dreamcast emulation originally. Mm. So that might be why. But it's got the jet black look. The green pops out on it. The logo takes up half the controller for some unknown reason. We don't know and why. It's not even a button. It's just literally just a bit of like <laughs> sticky plastic. Yep. Um, <laughs> see, see, my problem is. I my first Xbox I got with the 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 revision co- a controller which we'll talk about in a bit, and it was only when I needed a, a you know a second hand player two controller or player three or whatever it was that I got the Duke. You were that and guy here, friend. Take the bad controller. Getting getting used to the Duke after playing on the other one was hard work. No. No, so much more because of the white and black buttons, which were an oddity just for this, this for the original Xbox, um, being where they are in the was it the top right? I think that yeah. was just weird. 
and the the weird sort of jelly bean shaped buttons as well was just 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 weird. I I it's I don't enjoy the two. <laughs> the way the way I look at it is like Microsoft really wanted to get into the console space. They didn't have a lot of money. They had lots of resources. They went to their research department. We want to make this the most ergonomic you can. Just as long as it ticks all the ergonomic boxes, let's do it. And I think that's where like decisions like the size, the jelly bean buttons, the no shoulder uh, tops, that all and that all fits to that. That's that's the way I look at that. I know I am also in the minority of the Duke, but recently I feel like controllers have gotten smaller and smaller, and that's not something I really enjoy. So. But um, despite it being big, do you feel like it's the buttons are laid out in such a way that it's easy or nice for your thumbs to sort of travel across to them? Or do you think do you think it's too big? Because there's big and then there's the Duke. At the time, I thought it was too big. Going back now, they have Hyperkin have released a Duke uh USB controller. And it's got shoulders now, um, as well as the white and black. And also the sticker you you sold about was actually an LED screen now as well. Oh, that's and cool. I've looked at it from time to time, and I think that probably would be really good. For the demographic they were going for, it is just too big. And I know that. I know that. So I am willing to concede it being lower than, you know, average. So we're talking to C then? I think we're talking. It's not a disaster. No, it's not at all. A ste- as we said, like the PlayStation, uh, the original PlayStation controller, step in the right direction. You can see where they mm. went to. Now, how, what about extra features? I think it was the first console to have breakaway cables. That's a, that's a plus yes. as well. That is a, that is a good design feature yeah. Um, yeah. because obviously this was the last console generation before we got to wireless controllers being standard. And yeah, this is a good middle ground, really. Uh, mm. Protects your console, protects you if you if you trip over it as well um so yeah that is a feature that really should have been standardized a long time ago um but for actual day-to-day use i think it might be the i might put it on the lowest so far it is the lowest so far let's do it then we've got um xbox controller v2 which is a lot more manageable um it looks actually quite a lot like the switch pro controller really um, looking back at, at it, but essentially they've shrunken it down, gotten rid of the great big logo, put the white and black buttons on top. I think that's uh, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah, think this is right. uh, and this is easy uh, high A low S. I think wow. this is this is one of the the most comfortable controllers wow. going. Um, the the improvement from the Duke to this is. Is night and day. It's so much better, so comfortable. Um, the curved design, as opposed to sort of the more jaggedy edges of the Duke, is it just fits so much nicer in your hand. Um, moving the uh, the white and uh, black buttons to the bottom left, or is it the bottom right? It's still the white and black uh, buttons. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. the bottom. They're the bottom right. Sorry, bottom I, right. Yeah, yeah. I'm misremembering. Sorry, there are no shoulders, or are there? No, no, okay. no, no. There's, there's still no, there's still no sh- shoulders. But the the white and the black buttons, being where they are, feels so much nicer. It's more reminiscent of the of sort of you know a start and select on a PlayStation controller or or anything like that. So if you're coming from that, then it just feels more sort of instinctive. And we still got the breakaway cable. We still got all the cons that the the pros sort of should I say that made this uh, his predecessor so good. I I would put it top of A. Top of A, I would top say. Of a, top of A, okay, okay. Despite no shoulder buttons. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, I'm okay with that. Um, for the keen-eyed viewer and listener, it is called the Xbox Controller S. So they, they already have that S. brand. They do, yeah, that branding from an early age. They grow uh, up so fast. They grow up so fast. Um, so then after that, was a slew of portables. That was the that was the the generation apparently. Game Boy Advance, the Engage, the DS, the PSP. And then in 2005, Microsoft killed the Xbox early and released the Xbox 360. How do we feel about the Xbox 360? 
there there is a part of me again that wants to put this really near the top because it is a phenomenally fu- uh, a comfortable controller um you know having the the triggers and the shoulder buttons is just again so so it just became ubiquitous and for shooters for racing games having that trigger at the back is just gives you that oh it, it was feels the good. standard it was the standard it feels good um and wireless control as well like not sort of the crappy infrared we'd had before but actually a proper wireless controller that you can sit on the couch comfortable without losing the signal but but but, the, but we we should remember as well they made different varieties of this controller and there yes. was wired and wireless Yes, I yeah. I think for the sake of this, because it's the picture in the list as well. I <laughs> my mind goes to the to the wireless the one, the best one. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but the one thing which we can't get around, and seemingly neither can Microsoft, is the use of batteries, double A batteries. So um, bad, so bad. Yeah, and at this point, it was more forgivable. Uh, but by you know a modern lens, it's still annoying. You could buy the uh, the wireless battery packs that you'd clip onto the back. Um, the rechargeable battery pack, should I say? Um, but to, if we were just talking about the base model, that is still a massive inconvenience to keep having to buy batteries all of the time, and a tremendous waste of you know, just like you know, I go chucking I, away a lot. Of I, I go crap. back and forth on the idea because, like, the PlayStation can the PlayStation controllers with the inbuilt batteries, they don't really last very well, so having something where you can remove the batteries itself would be a better sort of way of doing it. And, but then also, you know, is the controller going to last longer with or without the batteries? You know, mm. when you have a, a controller like this, it is nice to play with it, no batteries and the lighterness of it. Whilst yeah. the, you can't do that with, you know, stuff that is built in. So it is a do, good point. Do go back and forth. Uh, I I think though that this again, if if we sort of look at the natural progression from the Duke to the to the S to the to the 360 controller, this is the next logical step and it improves it in every single feasible way. So I think it has to go above the S. So if we're not talking sort of top of A, then we've got to talk at the bottom of S. I think from the that people <laughs> The Xbox 360 era was a time and a place. It felt like, you know, Sony was the old guard. They didn't really know what they were doing. And Xbox 360, Xbox Live, controllers that were defining. It was a time and a place. And the controller definitely helped for that as well. So I, I, I'm okay for the, you want to say S? Let's do S. Yeah, let's do S. Let's do S. Let's do brunch and let's do S. Uh, a year later was the PlayStation 3 with the DualShock 3. Well, we had the six axes first. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the less said about that, the better. I think that's uh, important to note, though. Um, at the time, Sony said it was didn't fit with their creative vision, uh, when really they meant, we're being sued by someone. We can't put them in at the moment. Please try again later. And they did. Yeah. Uh, the, the six axis itself, though, surprising battery life because of no vibration and light so light Mm -hmm. it's so light there is nothing in there um which was a a a good plus well you say that i do like my controllers to have a bit of weight to them because it feels like if i drop this it would just shatter you like a bit of heft i do like a girthy controller i like it to be i I like you to know that you got a controller in your your hands you you like some girth add add a bit of girth more girth needed the the only thing different, really, if we look at both of these together, is that PlayStation button slap bang in the middle. Yep, that's it. Wireless as well. It's the it's the future now, guys. That's what we're doing. We've decided. Where do we put it? Because the, we had the PlayStation Three boomerang prototype, which never went anywhere because it was laughed out. Because clearly, building. that would have been like god tier. That would have ascended above S. <laughs> But this this is do, do we dock points because it's more of the same, but because it's not broke, don't fix it sort of thing. Where where do you where do you go from there? It's really difficult because I I completely agree with you that there is sort of two 
schools of thought as to whether it, you know, it's a winning formula or is it resting on your laurels? And I think this was a generation that Sony really were resting on their laurels. They, you know, you could even see from their ad campaigns, which were just like super weird for the PlayStation, yeah. that they just assumed everyone was like, you know, we're the big billy bollocks. We're like, you know, everyone's just going to go for PlayStation this time because they always have. Um, when in actual fact, I think that there was a lot that was a bit, a bit stale this time around. Um, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of games where the control of is starting to show its age and particularly with you know the sticks and also the triggers at the back it just doesn't feel quite as nice as the the 360 um i don't think it's, a, it's so much of a case of the the, th- the playstation 3 is worse than the ps2 because it's not because this is the same controller i think it's just that the standard of the competition was raised so high that it seems worse by by default by comparison yeah, so I, I forgot to mention the triggers. Um, the PS2 is a button, but on this one, uh, the the DualShock 3 and the 6-axis was more of a trigger type to give you a more of an ergonomic feel. And if you were like doing a gun or something like that, it, it had a bit of pressure sensitivity, I believe. Mm. But people changed the button configurations from the 360 release and the PlayStation 3 because like it wasn't that good. So that's... it's. That they they tried doing little bits, but overall, did it help? Did it? No, okay. I I I I don't think this as much as it it does do more with wireless and you know uh, ev- everything else. I prefer the DualShock Two. Call me nostalgic, but nostalgic. Think, <laughs> how dare you? I think that that was the sweet spot, and I think that by this point, a, a uh revision was needed and we didn't get enough this time around how low we want to go is is a tricky one because it's not a bad controller it, it's a yeah. decent controller but it's boring it's boring at this point wait you're saying there's something negative about the playstation 3 on the internet when we put this video out can you believe heavens that? to betsy um low a low high b high b i would say high b better than n64 I would personally say that. What would you say? See, my, again, the the devil on my shoulder is saying at least the N sixty four tried something new. At least the N sixty four tried to be different. The PlayStation just played it safe. Okay, fine. Let's put it after the N sixty four controller then. All yeah. right. Okay. All right. Look at that smile. He's like, yeah. Speaking of someone that tried to do something different, the Wii. I remember being an internet goer properly once the Wii was due to release. They showed off the console and it felt like forever that we were waiting to find out the remote. And then, boy howdy, we got that remote. What were your thoughts, Tom? I think it's interesting that this is the first uh, console that you've called it a remote instead of a controller (laughs) because it looks like a TV remote. (laughs) It doesn't look like a games controller. Um, it's in a league of its own for better or worse because it was the first controller that was built from the ground up to be used for uh motion control uh it does have a lot of the you know the identity of nintendo if you actually sort of turn it on the si- its side it is kind of like a weird snes controller yeah it is weird and also just like the snes controller doesn't feel great when you hold it like that yeah, it's it's no, and the the problem is is that one t- to fully enjoy most games, you needed the nunchuck, which some people call part of the controller. Some people call it an an accessory. I think if it's a necessity, it's not an accessory, and I'm gonna not wrap. Because, wow, that I want on a shirt. Uh, but yeah, like even on Wii Sports, which is you know the the pack in title, the boxing you needed a nunchuck. And so it, is, it isn't an, it's an accessory, it's an extension of the controller. The other thing is, is that the motion control, which was the defining part of this, didn't work very well. They had to get the motion control plus, as an, and that, which eventually was built into the controller, but was originally a, a, an add-on to get it to function how it was originally meant to function. So it tried so much and it, you know, it, it got a, a whole demographic of people who weren't gamers into gaming 
but from a purely objective point of view, it didn't work very well. It just didn't work well. It was, there were so many add-ons. There was the Wii Remote Plus, which felt like you were holding a massive wand. There was the Nunchuck. There was the classic controller. There mm-hmm. was a, there was a vitality sensor. Uh, was there? A, no, no, sorry. That was canceled. Sorry. Yeah. The vitality was sensor was, was announced, but never, yes. never used. Um, and like they they made the zapper, they made a wee wheel. You think about all of those third party plastic crap that is just in landfill somewhere yeah. now. The, the idea of the Wii Mote itself, which was his official name, wasn't it? A Wii Mote? Yes, yes um, it was. It's, it is revolutionary. It changed the way we think about it. But then for a lot of the games, like Smash Brothers, you know, we we used the classic controller because it was just so much better. Yeah. I, the, 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 you go. The one positive, though, that I will say through my charade of negativity, it was nice to play a game and be able to stretch and, you know, move around because you sit here for a while and you're just doing this. is isn't good for you, I found out. No. Uh, no. I, I, when it works well, it does work really, really well. But my mind always goes back to uh, playing or wanting to play Red Steel, one of the one of the launch titles, I think. See, that's of your first the- problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see these these trailers that they put on or ads on TV where it is literally you see a guy with his Wemo waving around a, a samurai sword on the, on the screen and you're like this is everything I wanted from a game is to literally walk around and just literally start like swiping people like the Star Wars part of my brain was like I could do this with a lightsaber soon I'm sure but then you actually play it and you're just like because it just doesn't pick it up very well it just doesn't doesn't work as intended and that's the thing with the Wii I think in general is the well with the Wii mode the Wii did deliver in a lot of ways but the Wii mode I think is a lot of potential just not executed quite right and I think a lot of that goes down to the fact that Nintendo tries to keep their prices down low for most things like if you look at even like a Switch compared to you know any of the other rival consoles now the the actual build quality is pretty pretty poor and uh, and that is because they want to keep things cheap and i think in this case they kept things too cheap at the expense of quality and it shows and as much as i i love playing on wii sports to this day and things like that i don't think i can grade this very highly so what if it wasn't because of the the cheapness of it but what if what they wanted out of the wii motion plus eventually wasn't actually available at the time what if they used that as an upgrade because they found the costs were, you know, reducing then, and then it was actually viable to, you know, add it in? Would that change your mind at all? No, because this it, again is just sort of you know how you how you experience it at the time, okay. and uh, you know, it, I, I it's not like from you know rose tinted spectacles. I think oh that wasn't as good as I remember. I remember being disappointed in a lot of games back then because of how poor the motion controls were um and yeah i think in that case again you know these things happen and controllers uh, consoles have to come out when they do to keep up with the market but in an ideal world they should have held off on the wii until you know that technology was affordable enough for them to put in it because we talk about how the dual shock came in too late for the playstation motion control motion plus sorry came in too late for the wii and that's what defined you know the 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 quality of the games the wii is is having that motion motion control plus or whatever it was so where where are you thinking then for the base model wii i think it's a c oh 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 for the not for the wii not for the wii but for the controller itself i think it's a c so we I, take the ga- we take the games out. We take the, the, the you know the how the, the cultural impact using that controller for either retro games, for platformers, for motion control, for everything. There are better experiences to be found almost anywhere else. I think uh, you've you've won me over on that argument there because I was just thinking playing a just Mario Art Mario game on that is not not the way to do it. Um. But I still, yeah, 
We're saying the Genesis controller is better than the Wii controller. <laughs> That's what you want to say. Is that really what you want to say? What have I done? <laughs> um, hmm. Part of me wants to say yes. All right, let's do it. As we said at the top, this is the definitive list and it's perfect and no one should yeah. argue with this. So, infallible. Infallible. Um, the Wiimote is better than the, the NES controller, but not the Genesis controller. You heard it here first. Genesis does, when I intend, we don't. Six years later, um, shovelware was just being paraded on the Wii, so Nintendo needed to upgrade their game. And they confu- they released a console with the most confusing name in history with the Wii U. So in this specific instance, we will talk about the Wii U tablet gamepad thing. But obviously it still had uh, the Wiimotes uh, compatibility there as well. I liked the Wii U gamepad. I think from an ergonomic level, it is still more comfortable than a Switch because they weighted it very differently. Obviously, you're not going to be holding it for all ages because the battery life on it was shocking and the resolution left much to be desired. But from some certain games where you had like something on the screen different to what you had on the tablet, that was a real fun time in like the three games that used it. Um, the touchscreen, at a time when iPhones ruled the world, the touchscreen was only one point, which was also very bad. Um, but I, I think it felt nice is the positive thing that I had taken away from it. What did you, what did you think about it, Tom? See, I've never personally owned a Wii U. I've only played on on friends and things like that. And I and I remember again when it worked, it was it was really cool because you know it was like the second screen for your um for your games. And so you know, like it just having that sort of tactile interaction in in such a new way, it was impressive. But then it's one of those things that you sort of you rub away the veneer and you realize actually, yeah, this is going to last about twenty minutes before it, I need to recharge it. Um, the the resolution is pretty pretty janky. It reminds me a little bit of if you go into a McDonald's nowadays and they have the kids tablets like glued to the to the seats. It's kind of that that vibe to it, um, and uh, it it feels like it, it again. It's it's a part of a package that includes the original Wii controller and nunchuck. So it feels. It's hard. It's another one that works really, really well in isolation. But then you add in all the details that go along with it, and it just doesn't. There, there, there are things that I think, whilst I enjoy the ergonomics of it, and it feels nice to hold. I know there are negatives. The battery life is awful. You are going to get major hand cramp from holding it, despite the ergonomics. Um, the microphone, not that great. ZL and ZR is still a bad naming convention to this day, and I still don't know why they went with that. So, the, and then also it's the Wii U, as as we all know. So, whilst there are pluses to this, I still think it is quite negative when you have the Wii U. I think, I think it's going to potentially have to go in D. D, really, really. I think, I think. I don't think done, it didn't fail because of that controller, though. No, but it's you've done what you know they say is a is a poop sandwich where you know you've you've said, oh, it's got this, you know, it does this good thing, done, done really really bad things, bad thing, bad thing. Oh, but it's not it's not too bad in the in the world of poop sandwiches. It's a Scooby snack sandwich where you know it's like in the Scooby Doo when it's like piled up to here, but it's just full of fecal matter. I I think it's a lot of lost potential. I just slipped off my chair there. Um, and uh, That's how much lost potential it has. Should... Yeah, literally. I, I just thinking about it is making me making me feel woozy. But it didn't deliver on enough. And for for as much of its uh, as much as it tried to do, it again was limited by budget and execution. And for that, I think it may be the worst console controller on this list. When you look at back at this historically, when they announced the Switch, I saw this and was like, oh, I get it now. That's what they were trying to do. And if you look back, the Wii U gamepad almost looks like a prototype Switch 
And I, with probably one more year, if Nintendo could afford it, if the Wii wasn't in the dumps, we probably would have got something a bit more uh, complete rather than looking a bit more like a prototype. So I, I, I'm okay with D-pad disaster for the Wii U. Okay. Um, so then after the Wii U, we have the PlayStation 4, which was the DualShock 4, which um, it, the, a major departure, really. Mm. It looks a lot different from the PS3's DualShock and uh, 6 Axis. They've added a touchpad in there. you got the light bar. It's a battery hog. It's not going to last very long. What are your thoughts about it, Tom? Uh, it feels a bit Nintendo-esque in that they're, they're trying to do some weird stuff. Like, that that touch bar... I don't know about you, I never use the touch bar. Like, never. <laughs> uh, and I do like the, uh, you know, the light the, the lights thing to reflect, you know, what player number you are, what the battery level is, and things like that. I think that was a nice touch. I don't like the beep noise when you turn on the controller. I think that's a bit jank. Uh, but it's a it's a con- comfortable controller to to own. I'm going to full, be full disclosure and say I play more Xbox than PlayStation have done for the past couple of generations. Uh, but all the time that I do break break out my uh, my PlayStation Four uh, controller, it feels nice. It does feel nice. I think the triggers feel a lot better better on the back now. Um, but Aside from that, it's just fine. It's just fine. I mean, the the paddles they are extended. It feels yeah. more complete. You know, it's a it's a bit rounder. It, it's a bit more punctual, if I may say so. You know, it mm. they 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 did realize that the light bar really didn't add anything. So they made a second revision, didn't they? Where it's got a slit at the top so that you yeah. can actually see the color as well, and also. Um, we worked at a secondhand retailer and the going meme at the time was PlayStation don't have good rubbers because the rubbers on those analog sticks, they rubbed off so quickly. Yeah. It was like sand. And the, I forgot these, about that. Yeah. See, the, these are the little things that should be knocked against it, I think. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it is a B because... Yeah, you know, it is. If we if we're saying DualShock Three does more of the same, the DualShock Four takes that and makes it better. You know, it, it it is doing something different with the touchpad and the light, the microphone. Might not all work, but you know they they tried, and that's that innovation was... is you know a commendable endeavor. And yeah. yeah, I think as you said, the build quality wasn't quite there. I do remember as well distinctly from our time working in the shop um, that the the, uh, the front panel bit where it sort of you had the seam that went up the uh, the, the the grippers, whatever you you <laughs> call it, uh, the thighs of the controller uh, that would come away quite easily, and uh, and th- that felt a little bit cheap, but. To, in again in on its day it was a it was a fine comfortable controller to use but i would rather have an xbox one controller over it any day so i think b is a fair a fair score better than dualshock 3 yes yes i would say so the the only real thing that juts out to me for the touch screen was maps uh so on an xbox controller you bring up an open world map with the PS4, you could touch screen, you could zoom in, zoom out, that sort of thing that the Xbox was missing. Uh, speaking of the Xbox, we got the Xbox One controller. Um, it's good. It's brilliant. It's, I, I, it's a really good. I Again, I think the, the good thing about Xbox controllers since day one is that every single one has been better than the last. Uh, and I think, again, this this iterates on the uh the 360 controller i know some people prefer the 360 controller but i just think this feels it feels premium it feels it, it feels comfortable i think the triggers feel great on the top the uh the the analog sticks are, are good mine did have a, a a little habit of because of just wear of like r- rubbing away a little bit but nowhere near as bad as some other consoles uh i like the uh the the share button on there as well or wh- whatever it was the one that's sort of left of center um i think th- those are positioned nicely so I like the gl- sorry the- whilst you're talking about that the pro i still have this problem today when there is a function on the menu 
two boxes or the lines, I still have to look down mm-hmm. and go like, which one is it? And like, I just start and select or any sort of, it's the same with the PlayStation. They got rid of start and select. I think that was a mobile thing, you know, and the internet age bringing in symbols rather than that. But those two buttons, if you tell me what they are, I still don't know. So it's lines on the right, squares on the left, isn't it? Lines to wait, squares to the left of me. Lines to the so right. Rough. Here I am. Oh, yeah. Stuck in the middle with a big X, which glows, which actually looks really nice. Uh, it, I like the I like it, the big glowing X in the middle. This is the second revision as well. They have the headphone port there, which they didn't mm. originally, but PlayStation was outselling them so badly. They were like, we need to do whatever we can to make some goodwill. So there you go. I did. I don't have any more uh, more because I literally did wear it out to the point that it wasn't any good. But I did have one of the original day one 2013 controllers, which I had that printed on the front of the uh, console, which is pretty cool. Big and dumb. I love it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is an S tier. Really? I, I think because I, I know a lot of people that even when they're playing on PC, this is their standard controller. And naturally nowadays... It's you can, yeah, is it because most controllers have USB support now. You can't. You've got you know a bevy of choice of which controller you use on PC. But you see that the Xbox One or Series X controller, which is basically the same thing, um, the uh, it is the co- a console a controller of choice, and I think that speaks speaks volumes. Yeah, I think the 360 the drivers were a bit iffy on the PC. With the Xbox One, it felt like they did a big swoop. Even though the launch was a bit bodged because of the Kinect that was included, the controller was a strong... It was just strong. And then mm. they did the drivers for the PC as well, which meant, you know, people were going to buy it for that reason. And as it's gone on, you know, it still doesn't have batteries in it. But I felt like with that controller, the rechargeable packs were easier to get the official ones rather than, you know, the yes. the, the one before it. That is the only other thing that we haven't mentioned is that this still used batteries as standard, which is dumb. It's so dumb. Yeah, it. That is that is. I there should be a, a bigger conversation about controllers and batteries at some point, and only me and you will listen to that. So that will be a fun one. Uh, where are you thinking in S? I think it has to go above the uh, the three hundred and sixty controller. Okay, but you don't want it above GameCube. No. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I think it should. I think yeah, it should. I'm going to beat you before. I'm going to beat the comments. Why is Tom such an X bot? What's what's that about? Well, that's, an you X, know, X X thought. X for, He's an X. For, <laughs> uh, Nintendo Switch. Over a hundred million units sold. So there are at least two hundred million Joy Cons. They're too small. Yeah. They're, they're, they're too, too small. They, they, they're a difficult one to grade because you can play them in so many different ways. I think when they're attached to the tablet, they feel pretty good. I quite like them like that. But then as soon as you split them out into you know the the individual Joy Cons when you're playing multiplayer, they are they they are controllers for ants. Mm-hmm. And this is all without even going into the whole issue with Joy Con drift, which is frankly a scandal of how bad it is. Is it still a uh, problem? They still haven't. Oh really- god, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's still it's still a problem, and uh, it's it's atrocious. Um, but when they're attached to the console, I think they're they're fine. Um, but so they are the, they're the weakest part of the Switch. The Switch is my favorite console of all time. I would say, um, just 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 for for a bevy of reasons, but I think the Joy Cons are one of its major major glaring weak points. So there's an infrared sensor in there. There is a NFC sensor in there. Um, they, 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 they're a bit too light. Um, they don't feel... They, they feel too small in your hands. They, they can be played in different ways, which is a positive, but you have to have an adapter to play it sideways. And even then, it is smaller than an NES controller. So... It just doesn't feel good. And yeah, they're, they're, I feel as though when I think about this, like you said, 
the Joy-Cons are a negative, and because of the form factor of the Switch, they're never going to make a bigger pair. So there's third-party add-ons, which are just mental out there to add more, you know, ergonomic feel to it. And it is it is the weakest part, as you said. Yeah, I, I think as but- much as I love the Switch, I couldn't give this higher than a low C, I reckon. Even with all the color combinations, it's yeah. still it's still not I, good. I, I still won't turn down uh, if anyone wants to gift me the Skyward Sword uh, limited edition because that yeah. does look real good. If anyone wants to give me the uh, Waluigi slash Wario color color way, I will have that as well. Um, yeah, but is it better than the Wii? Yes, really? I would okay. say so. Okay. I think just because of the versatility, you don't need to have any extra peripherals or anything like that they do work as intended they're just small and well i say work as intended joy con drift but um but in terms of like you don't need to buy a nunchuck you don't need to buy a, a you know a motion plus you know dongle to stick in the bottom they they're fine as they are and they are versatile you can use them in the console you can use them on their side i think there's a lot to be said that you don't you can get a switch in a shop and you don't need to buy a controller too to play multiplayer local multiplayer you can literally just Split them out, give one to someone else, and you can play two player on your couch there and then. But it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good, but that is still a, a feature yeah. that no no one else gives you. Um, so I think that puts it above the Wii. Not uh, much more above, but above. Yeah, I'm interested to in see how Wii Sports. Um, sorry, the Nintendo Switch Wii Sports that's coming out soon. How that feels with a Joy-Con compared to the Wii Remote that we all know because of mm. the, the the thickness of a Wii Remote compared to a Joy-Con. The um, thickness. Do you want to do the last controller on this list as well? Which so is what, what? the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Okay, so so where sorry, where did we put the Switch controllers? Did we, we put, put it above. C? Yep, uh, high C. High. Okay, perfect. The highest cool. C. Like the way place that the pirates go on. Uh, so we have the pro controller, the switch pro controller, which I, I alluded to it before. This is without a doubt my favorite video game controller. Uh, this is a head over heart decision. I'm not, this isn't me just like gushing over the, the GameCube. I think this is objectively the most comfortable, most versatile, best controller going today. Just love it. I think it feels really nice in your hands. Uh, it's it's got the, the a good weight to it. I think it looks good. I just I just love this controller. I think it's great. The one thing, so it does feel good. The button. Let, so obviously this is a preference. Xbox, Nintendo, um, PlayStation have their their X's in the different thing. So. I've got it in my ma- mind where the A, B, X, and Y are, and Nintendo is like, nope, you don't know where that is. And that uniformity just makes me think, Nintendo, what are you doing? This is the standard now. Um, so it feels nice. The battery life lasts five years. I don't think I've charged mine since I've bought mine. The problem, however, this might just be mine, but it is loud. When it vibrates, it is so loud to a point where I think, has not someone not tested this to make sure this is actually usable? I feel like it's going to rattle out my hands and crawl across the floor. See, I've not had that. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, yeah, you might need to get yours looked at. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, my, mine, you know, it has got a decent vibrate on it, but no, nothing I haven't, you know, thought was out of the usual. You're, you're a man that knows about a good vibrate saying. Well, some may say uh the other thing which is a bit of a niche feature but still nice nonetheless is that this is one of the few controllers other than the wii u actually that has nfc functionality um so uh i know that the joy cons did to an extent but in terms of like a you know a, a proper proper controller you know a working working man's controller uh it's cool that you can just like whack your amiibos on there you don't need to put it on a console or anything like that you do you have just... amiibos no <laughs> But if I wanted to, I could. I, I, do, you have, do you have any amiibos? No, uh, I thought about it once, and then I thought that's a stupid hole to go down. And then if I really wanted amiibo support, there are ways, wink, wink, to add that functionality without amiibos. Wink, wink. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? 
You, he knows what I'm saying. I, I do know what you're saying. I would say A for this. See, I was going to put this right at the top of S. You think that that's better right at the top? Right at yes. the top? The best, the best controller of all time. <laughs> I don't agree with that. And... Yeah, I think. Do you think frankly, it's better? You're a man. Do you think it's it's worse than the GameCube controller? I would put it above the GameCube controller. Well, then it's got to go in S. Okay. Well, yeah, there, there. I'm okay with that. There we go. We've done it. There we go. Well, we've got to do the dual sense, haven't we? It's not on here, but we can do it uh, in should. spirit. Yes, we're um, gonna, it's going to appear on screen now. Okay, Ooh. okay. Whoa, there it is. Um, we're not going to cover the Xbox Series controller. Um, even though it is new compared to this Xbox One controller, I think it is just smaller form factor and it's got a share button. And it's got tyre tracks on the analog sticks. Is that is that a good enough reason to rate it? No, I was just saying that that is a, a, a slight difference. <laughs> um, the Xbox Series X and S controller is like the PS3 to PS2 sort of yeah. thing. It's, yeah, yeah. it's very granular. It is. DualSense. Yeah. They took the PS4 controller and was like, let's make this more premium. How do we make this even more poncy looking? Um, See, it does do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I I have only again sort of played it in fits and bursts because uh, I never wasn't able to get a PS5 and still haven't been able to get a PS5. But I mean, haptic feedback is awesome. That is so cool. It's so cool. I think it feels comfortable. As you say, I think it looks premium. I think the the whole PS5 package, like everything, looks real nice. Um, it's just you can't, the only downside is you can't get one. <laughs> you can't get one. Um, the battery life is quite bad. Um, aside from that, though, I think it is a good controller. It feels got it's got a nice weight to it. Playing like I've got a PS5. When people come round, I say, "Here's Astro's playroom." Go ahead. And just people are blown away by in that controller. Just that tutorial alone where you're pressing all the buttons and it's showing you what can be done. It's, it is really creative what they've done compared to the past. And it, it makes me interested to see just what will happen in the future with controllers. Where, where would you put that? I think it does have to go high up because I can't think of, aside from the battery life, there's not a lot really wrong with it. And what it does do new, it does well. Um, I think I would put it alongside the Xbox One okay. series, slash Series X. I would put it sort of on par with that. Yeah, yeah. What? So in our chart, we're going to have PS2, Xbox One, then PS5? Yeah. I would say so. Then DualSense, come at us, PlayStation boys and girls. Um, we we will we're ex boys here. This is the definitive list to remember. So of course, of course, uh, come at me, uh, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, and, and we we've spoken at different lengths with these different controllers because the DualSense, the Switch, they're still new, really. Um, we're not looking back at them on a historical sense. So we're going to be a bit, you know, weighted differently, really, aren't we? Of course. I mean, this is, this is as much as we joke, it is an, a, you know, a subjective list. This is just our meager opinions uh, amongst a mass of opinions, all of which are wrong, except ours. Oh, they have opinions on the internet now. <laughs> they have the internet on computers now? Would you like me to go down the final list? Do it. And then I need to get some food. We have D-Pad Disaster, which is just a Wii U gamepad. Dusty, sitting there by himself. Mm, then we dusty. have C, C Grade. The worst is Xbox, followed by Sega Saturn. It's getting better with the NES. Then we've got the Wii Emote, and then we've got the little boy Switch controllers called the Joy-Cons there. B tier starts with the Sega Genesis, followed by the original PlayStation controller. Then the six axis slash dual shock three, then the dual shock four, then the N64 free pong free pronged beast, 
Then in the A tier, we've got the SNES controller, followed by the Dreamcast, the DualShock 1, and the Xbox Series... What was it? What was that one? S. Called? It was just the S. The wasn't S it? Sorry, yes, the Xbox controller S. Then in the S tier, we've got the Xbox 360. We've got the Nintendo GameCube. We've got the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, which Tom dubbed the best controller ever. We've got the DualSense. Then we've got the Xbox One controller slash Xbox Series S S controller. And then we are saying here today, definitively, the best controller ever to grace this earth is the DualShock 2 with the PlayStation 2 console. I'll tell you what, not enough people say nice things about the PS2. Uh, it, was, it was the little plucky underdog that could. And uh, I'm glad it's finally getting its time uh, in the sun. Yeah, yeah. People should talk about the PlayStation 2. There, there's a few good games in there, like Crash Bandicoot, The Wrath of Cortex. Have you seen how much Rule of Rose is on PS2? If anyone has a copy of Rule of Rose, uh, first of all, look it up because you're sitting on a gold mine, and secondly, give it to me. Um, but I'm pretty happy with that list. It is going to cause some anger, but I, 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 think, I think it's... It's it's pretty pretty fair. I'd say we've given we've shown our working uh, and we've we've come to a pretty logical, objective, correct opinion. And that's what we want to be objective but correct. Shallow and pedantic. Upsidedownshark.com for more objective yeah. but correct opinions. Yeah, if you want to see more of these lists, as I say, just drop us a comment below as to what you want us to rank. Uh, this has been fun, but very long. Very, very Too long. Too long. They always are. They always are. But I've had fun, and uh, I hope you've had fun uh, joining me, Craig. Always. Uh, excellent. And I hope you've had fun watching at home. If you want more stuff from us, as Craig said, it's UpsideDownShark.com. We've got more videos, articles, podcasts, everything you like. My name is Tom. <laughs> My name is Craig. <laughs> Pregnant Pools. And this has been a pregnant shark called UDS Gaming. Ranking spankings. Goodbye. Goodbye.